come on. <laughs> <laughs> Always waiting for sound, as they say. Right, right. Isn't it roll sound first? Yeah. I have a line. I say it's called motion pictures, not motion sound. No, I'm kidding. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> That's fighting words. <laughs> well, you gotta be Just that way. kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> Do you also direct? Uh, I have directed short things, but I'm having too much of a great time being a DP, so, and I just get to work with great people, so it's kind of a double-edged sword. I mean, I get that question enough after you've been doing this for almost 30 years that uh, there's always the question, and for me, if the right project came, I would definitely consider it, but I'm having too much of a great time. I have too, such good collaborators now. It's kind of hard to kind of not want to be in that world all the time, especially with Sarah. I mean, we've known each other for so long. We've been, we have such a shorthand. Uh, I just feel so comfortable working on her projects, but you never know. I'm always open. Yeah. When you and Sarah were working on this, was it hard for you to actually be shooting this, this kind of topic? You know what, absolutely. I mean, every, every one of Sarah's films get progressively more challenging because I think she consciously tries to pick subject matter that means a lot to a lot of people and challenges the way we are. So for me, this is kind of the, you know, the, the pinnacle of that for her, the, 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 the most challenging subject to date that we've tackled. So the level of sensitivity that we needed, every one of Sarah's films have required that. Uh, but this one is no exception, and just the kind of importance of the project, even beyond reading the script or the movie, just hearing about the story, you are very conscious about the kind of how it could touch people. So for me, yes, this was probably the most difficult film I've had to be involved with. I know my job, but when you have this subject matter and you know it could affect many people, and continue the conversation, you, it, it's kind of hard not to feel like you're kind of a bit of a part of a movement. I've said that to people, uh, men, women, anybody. So the, our team was very much a very close-knit team, uh, and it was difficult for some of our, our crew to, to be there, including myself. Uh, so it's that balance between doing your job as a cinematographer, our crew doing their jobs because they feel the importance, but also being extremely sensitive uh, to our cast that need that space to kind of work. So it's this odd mix of filmmaking and also having to be a human being. So this is definitely something I learned a lot from that way. Yeah. When you're using choice of lenses for like perspective to tell the story, maybe this lens tells the story better from being far away. Mm -hmm. Did you have that challenge with Sarah? Like maybe a far away shot would be better, like kind of blurry out of focus. Did right. you did you have to go with some of that? Absolutely. I mean, we designed the film quite precisely because, especially with a story like this, especially Miriam's wonderful novel, it's about people talking in a room. These women are in this hayloft talking. And when you translate that to a film medium, it's a different medium. You have to engage the audience on a, a lot of different levels. You have to engage them visually. So those choices you say of which lenses to use, when we the camera drifts outside as opposed to staying on a close-up of a long monologue, it's like a piece of music and you kind of try to design these moments where you're very intensely engaged by this very intense conversation, but then Sarah was beautifully causing these quiet moments to happen immediately after that so that you can actually have time to absorb things. So I, that's why I equate the movie to a piece of music that way. There are very quick refrains and then there are moments where you just are kind of experiencing the moment. So these kind of ups and downs in the, in the script were important to capture photographically. So yes, we were very conscious of uh, how we were photographing it. Also, I had these great old lenses that were from the 50s called Ultra Vista lenses that Panavision came out. I spent about a year trying to source them because I just understood that the story and the kind of softness of the lens would really lend itself. So to me, it's all about detail filmmaking and it's never too much detail. So when you use Ultra Vista lenses, yeah. how did you find the right mounts for them? Well, they were all designed by Panavision, so... so they're all still meant, um, panning mounts they're still? They're panning mounts, okay. uh, but the glass is rehoused lenses from the 50s, and they're a, they're a large format anamorphic lens. So for me, I wanted you to feel every blade of grass, every pore of skin, 
And usually today in modern cinema, you have either shooting anamorphic, which is the older glass, or spherical, which is the regular widescreen. This lens combines the best of both. And there's only about seven or eight sets of these lenses in the world. So to me, it's kind of a unique look for the film, as opposed to having more modern technology that makes things look a bit more cold and clinical. It needed to feel gothic, the film. It needed to film feel like it was set in history a little bit more, even though we were tricking you at the time. It was never meant to be period, but I needed to, in the spirit of tricking the audience to find out when is this, it made them think. I kind of chose those lenses to help with that. Last question is going to be, isn't it funny how a computer really can't give it the look? The lens gives it that detail, fine, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. It's, there's a real thing happening in cinematography now where you have this really rich history of film technology that a lot of, and that's why I love Panavision, to not sound like a plug, but they've always been holding on to every era that they've been around, they've held on to the technology. And today, they're one of the few places, and there's other lenses out there too, but merging the old and the new seems to be what a lot of modern cinematographers are doing because we miss that old, nostalgic, kind of more filmic feel. We've had like 100 plus years of us as viewers watching this. You feel off when you don't have an element of that. That's my personal taste. So that's how I approach the film. Well, since you're saying this, are you superstitious with your panty stuff that you pick, like that you reused? Uh, superstitious? Like, well, meaning like, a, like Lucas will use the same exact camera for right. another film, <laughs> or like a, a certain set of lenses with a last serial number 7606. Right. I need to use that one again because my last film right. did this. Did you have any of that going on? You know what? I try to approach every project with a fresh eye. I think every script demands something new. So no, I'm not a, I, I'm not, I try not to be superstitious in my work. I just try to see it as objectively as possible. You know, it's, it's funny. Some people has, have asked me, Luke, what's your style? And despite having tendencies and things as a visual person, I, I always answer, I hope I don't have a style yet because every script demands something different. You, you have producers and directors, writers that have spent so many years developing things. I find my responsibility is to bring out every nuance of that. So to me to say I kind of come in with a sledgehammer and just apply a look to everything, that's why if you look at the work Sarah and I have done, every film has been a bit of an evolution and we try to be as pure to the story that she wants to tell or any director I work with wants to tell. So I spend a tremendous amount of time trying to figure that out to avoid that superstition of, oh, I don't know where to go. So a lot of my work is done not even shooting. It's actually dissecting and getting into the story. That's why I became a DP in a cinematographer. I just love that part of it. Right. So, yeah. All right. Good answers, man. Thank you. Good job, Luke. <laughs> Thanks All right. very I'm much. I'm impressed. Yeah. Good talking sure. to you. Likewise, man. Thank you.